Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is Truth in Menu. Um, Truthinmenu.com is where you can find uh, one of my websites where I talk about really, I, I call out chefs and I try to protect the consumer because what you're getting in a restaurant in a, in a grocery store and behind a, a fish counter is not the case all the time and I'm just so upset about this and I see restaurants lying about things and and I point things out and they'll still keep on going about it and it's like the people they believe is just, just it's insanity what happens in restaurants you think you're buying something and you're not you think you're buying wild salmon and it's not wild salmon it's farm salmon you're, I mean I take it very personal when, when I'm misled about something and I and you should too and you should have, you have the right to stand up you have the right to know what you're eating in a restaurant so the latest restaurant is Cheeseburger in Paradise um, Cheeseburger in Paradise is a chain that's I think in I don't know 10 12 states four states it, it, it's, it's like a northeast chain here Cheeseburger in Paradise it's um, burger burger place they do bands they have a nice bar there in the center I, I've actually been in there a couple times not to not to partake in the food but to meet in a social setting with other people um, they have one here in Middletown New York which is the one that I'm I'm gonna blog about today one of my staff members was in there about three months ago and said Marcus they have Kobe burgers at Cheeseburger in Paradise and my staff is very diligent not to use the word Kobe on Wagyu or Akaushi or anything like that because true Kobe beef is from Kobe Japan okay true Kobe beef has never been legally allowed to be imported into the United States it's uh, such small productions each uh, each cattle is actually tagged with like a nine or ten digit like like identification number and uh, that gets carried on through the whole meat processing stage to the end delivery so you know exactly what cattle it came from um, the production there is so so small there's only like one processing plant maybe two that that actually are allowed to process Kobe beef it has to go through a special processing as well and those processing plants have never ever been legally allowed to be imported into the United States they just start exporting uh, their Kobe beef into Macau uh, China because uh, there's a big market there and that just happened like a year or so ago so until then you couldn't get Kobe beef off the island so what people were getting was they were getting Japanese beef non Kobe Japanese beef I'm not saying Kobe is the best beef because there could be other better beefs but Kobe does a great job in marketing see Kobe is a trade name um, just like champagne comes from a region and it's protected from sh in, in France by the government, Kobe is a protected name of the region where they produce this, pri this really prized beef. So you can get other Japanese beef. That's quite possible. It was quite possible until two years ago. But until two years ago, they had something called foot and mouth disease. And the U.S. government shut off all imported meat from Japan. There's no longer any imported meat from Japan available at all. So when you see a menu that says Kobe beef on the menu, it's impossible. When you see something that says Japanese beef on the menu, it is impossible. It can be a Japanese breed that's raised in Australia, that's raised in the United States, that's raised in Texas. It can be a bre it can be the breed, but it can't be true born, raised, processed in Japan cattle. That's impossible. The law does not allow that to happen. So there's a lot of, I made a video on all these chefs that were doing it, I mean all these top chefs, Wolfgang Puck, so Cheeseburger in Paradise, you're not alone in this. Um, a lot of other people, are, top celebrity chefs are, are still advertising they have Kobe beef and they legally don't, it's impossible. Forbes wrote a great article about this about four months ago, five months ago in 2012 and in late spring. Uh, on, on going everything over that I'm going over with and how just and it's impossible to get stuff. It's, it's legally not possible. You cannot get it here. Um, so cheeseburger in paradise. My, my one of my staff says, you know, they're serving Kobe burgers. So I call them up and and you know start asking stupid questions like, oh Kobe, oh yeah Kobe, we have Kobe this, Kobe that. And they have one Kobe burger on the menu. And uh, let me exactly read what it exactly says here. Um, let me get their their site specific site for um, Middletown, New York, because they have different websites for every location because the menus are different I guess so the menu that we're experiencing here in Middletown might not be a menu somewhere else and from what I'm told this is actually a test batch on their Kobe burger in Middletown not every store has it so I immediately called them and created some dialogue with them and, they said, and what they told me was well that comes from our corporate office 
and our corporate office is, you know, what comes from and this and that. So, you know, they're, they're basically hands, you know, basically they threw it off in the corporate office, which is probably their best answer to do because uh, they, you know, these corporations have big, um, lots of red tape and they just can't make changes. That's why they're a chain. That's why they're a franchise and that's why franchises do that because they expect the experts at the top of the, the food chain in these corporations, these franchises, to make all the proper decisions and all the knowledge base and just hand it down so it can be easily duplicated. So they have, here it is, Prime Kobe Burger. And it says 100% American, so they wrote American, Prime Kobe Beef topped with caramelized onions, da 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 So, first of all, I know the farm they're using this from. I know exactly the farm because I did my research. I actually tweeted, tweeted uh, Cheeseburger in Paradise. They actually sent me back a link for Heart Brand Beef. Now, Heart Brand Beef is not Kobe. It's not even one of the breeds used in Kobe. Kobe consists of, I think, about four different breeds. The Akaushi breed is a red-coated cattle. It's not a black-coated cattle. It's a red-coated cattle that is a hardier cattle that is actually out on pasture, not locked up in a special pen, what they do with true Kobe beef. So this is actually pasture, more pasture-raised cattle. It's a much hardier cattle. So they tweeted me back, check out Heartbrand, and their tweet was, it's guaranteed for its genetics and quality and satisfying quality. And I know this farm because I use this farm. When I started using this farm six years ago, seven years ago, they were only doing 20 animals a week. Very, very, very small farm. It's purebred Akaushi beef, raised in Texas. But here's the neat thing about what this farm is doing. And they, they, should be, they should be telling all the neat things that this farm is doing because they're not doing it proper justice calling it Kobe. And if you talk to the people at Heartbrand, they don't want to be referred to Kobe at all. They don't, they, they, they don't want to be confused with Kobe. They feel that, that Kobe is, that I feel they're, they're possibly better. The beef can be better than Kobe, and it can be better, especially better than American style Japanese cattle, the Wagyu. I feel the Akaushi is better. And the neat thing about Heartbrand, um, about this ranch is, in 1994, Donald and Ronald, the two brothers, went to Japan. They brought over 11 full grown, purebred, red coated Akaushi cattle on a Boeing 747 equipped to carry livestock. Now, that has never that had never been done before. Japanese immediately cut off that trade agreement, that, that loophole in the trade agreement uh, for, for livestock like that. They brought these 11 cattle back to Texas. These are big time ranchers now. They want to get, they want to really get an edge, a competitive edge in the boutique beef world. And this is how they felt would do it. And it, it's working. So, the threats on the cattle from the Akaushi Association, they thought neighbors are going to come crossbreed because they have this rare Japanese cattle. So they had to pay off-duty Texas Rangers to watch these cattle 24 hours a day the first couple of years because there was threats on the cattle. Now from 11 cattle, they've grown ahead up to like 4,000 cattle. They were processing 20 head uh, six years ago. Now, I was really concerned when I found out it was them, so I called Heartbrand right away and I said, what are you guys doing? Are you selling out? You're in a chain. You're in a franchise. They explained, you know, it's, it's only a testing thing. They're only doing it in a couple locations. Um, and I said, you know, they're calling your beef Kobe. And they're like, oh, you know, that's... And I said, I know. I don't call your beef Kobe. And I understand because I've spoke to you guys many times. I understand you're not Kobe, but this is what that's on their menu. And they're just like throwing their arms up there at Heartbrand, you know. Heartbrand is still a small company. They're still produce, they now produce 45 head a week, which is nothing compared to the big guys. The big guys do 400 head an hour. 45 head a week is nothing. Just unfortunate that I'm serving Akaushi and a restaurant down the street is serving Akaushi. The good news is they're almost, I think they're almost a little bit higher priced than I am because their weight difference. So that's what makes me feel good. When we charge $18 for our burgers. We give a big burger and we give, you know, organic vegetables and, and potatoes and, and organic ketchup with a high fructose corn syrup. I usually don't plug my restaurant in, in, in here, but, you know, I kind of felt that they're so close. And I, this is what really outraged me to begin with because they're serving something so close and they're calling it Kobe and they're really having Akaushi, which I have, which I took all this energy to source. So through the tweets, they're like, well, this is what the supplier told us. The supplier worded our menu for us. The supplier gave us the verbiage. Like, I've been through this before. You cannot trust suppliers. Performance Food Group, whoever they're, they're ordering from, it's, it's not the case. It's not Kobe. It's not even graded out as prime because they don't grade the beef prime. It's Akaushi. They're proud of their Akaushi. It's Akaushi. You have to represent it for what it is. So Cheeseburger in Paradise. Through our tweets, I would have thought you would have at least changed your menu because this was a good three, four weeks ago. 
when, and I told you, but please change your verbiage on the tweets um, because you're just representing a wrong product here. So I, of course, called Cheeseburger in Paradise uh, several times again uh, just recently and, you know, asked questions about their Kobe burger, and they swear they got Kobe beef there. They swear it's American pure prime Kobe beef, you know, and this is the part that sucks because now the average consumer is going to go there and believe they're eating Kobe beef, and then when they go to a restaurant like mine and say, I can't get Kobe beef, they're going to say, well, this big massive chain that, of course, is not lying because it's a big massive chain that probably got their act together is serving real Kobe beef. So what are you talking about, Marcus? You're just this one chef going on on this rant, and here's a big chain with, you know, that's supposed to have their act together. It kind of sucks. So, Cheeseburger in Paradise, I'm tweeting you this video. Please make the change, reword, reword it, educate your staff, um, and do the right thing here. This is this is misrepresenting Kobe. Now the problem, it's like Champagne, Champagne French and these other regions, they'll come after you for trade names because they are highly protected. Kobe doesn't have the proper legal representation here in the U.S. and, and all that to go after and start prosecuting and going after and warning people to stop. But there's a lot of states where it's illegal to actually misrepresent, especially places like Florida to misrepresent the fish you're serving. There's strict fines, like $5,000 of an incident for mislabeling your menu. And this is obviously clearly mislabeled. Akaushi is totally different than a region of beef called Kobe. Totally different. Um, if you know, I've gotten some emails lately too about people that want me to do more investigating in other places. So if you know a place that you think is lying, you work in a place that you want to expose and you want me to put them out there, I'll do it. I'm glad to. I'm more than happy to. So email me at marcus at marcusg.tv. Marcus at marcusg.tv and I'll do the investigating. Um, I'll call them. I'll ask some hard-hitting questions. I'm Chef Marcus Julian. I'm a chef on a mission. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, um, pass it on, share it and uh, demand better food and demand truth in menu, truthinmenu.com. Thank you very much.